Hi, I'm starting out with the grill. Got myself a Weber iGrill 2 system here, and I wanted to do an unboxing with you. Going to be unboxing it, showing you how I'm going to set it up with my Green Mountain Grills Daniel Boone. Since that only has one meat probe, this will give me four additional meat probes. So I'll have a total of five meat probes I'll be able to use since that grill has one. And that grill also has its own ambient probe. But going to unbox it here, show you everything that's inside so that you're familiar with what's in the Weber iGrill 2. So if you're thinking about getting a Weber iGrill 2 for any type of grill, you'll know what's inside, what comes with it. If you're not familiar with what the Weber iGrill 2 is, it is a meat thermometer system. Basically, it helps you to keep track of the temperature of your food. If you have a grill that does not have an ambient probe, they sell a separate ambient probe that you can use. And so uh, it's a pretty good tool. I've got iGrill 3 already and videos about that. But iGrill 2, the good thing about iGrill 2, it works on any grill. iGrill 3 only works on Weber Genesis 2 grills and some others. But going to get the seals unlocked here. So with iGrill 2, you can use it on anything. Big green egg, uh, pellet smoker, you name it, you can use it. So... Uh, <clears throat> and get it unboxed and so there's our iGrill 2 the main unit it's pretty big um, you can see probably from the size of my watch band how much bigger it is than even my uh, watch band is it's a pretty big unit pretty sizable unit here and uh, <laughs> let's see, got a little welcome quick start guy. Good thing comes with some nice Duracell batteries. And it comes with two meat probes. So they're taped in here. One and two. It also comes with a stick on magnet piece that basically you can put the tape on the side of something and then you can magnetize the uh, eye grill to that. So that's pretty cool. Now I'm going to have to get that off. Alright. So here are the four probes down at the bottom. One, two, three, four. Up top here you've got some uh, you got the arrow thing here. You got your Bluetooth indicator there. Okay, so to basically put the batteries inside of it, you just have to separate the base from this part here. It just pulls out. And then you can open the back here. And you got your standard, you know, battery holder there. So let me go ahead and get these batteries in. First battery, get your second battery, then you can close it up and start to beep. You can put it back in the base. Now it's on and it's doing a Bluetooth search. I'm going to hold this power button for a couple of seconds and it goes off. So you can just press that power button once to come on and it goes through its sequence where it starts searching through Bluetooth for your app because you have to use the iGrill app with this. And if you hold this power button for a couple seconds, you're off. So I'm going to just take this on out to the grill and show you how I'm going to have it set up. Also show you how I'm going to um, integrate with the app with it. So we'll show you everything outside. Alright, so out here at the grill, I won't be needing this little magnetic plate on my grill in particular because since the iGrill 2 has a magnetic back, I can just, you know, put it like that and it holds in place, but can't put it there because it would be facing down. I wouldn't be able to see the temp. But if I set it like right there, I can see the temp and it's in a place that doesn't get too hot over here on the side of this pellet hopper. So this would be a decent place to just have it setting and if I need to put pellets in I can just move it down for a moment.
put my pellets in and then put it back. So you just have to find a cool place on your grill. Remember, a cool place. This cannot get hot. This uh, back is not heat resistant at all. You'll mess your eye grill too up if you have it on anything hot. So you can't put it over here or any place that gets real hot. And I wanted to mention the iGrill 2 works through Bluetooth. It does not work through Wi-Fi. So your range is limited as far as your access to it. You walk too far away, you're going to lose your signal. So you got to make sure that when you want to get a reading, you stay close. The iGrill app is nice enough to let you know when you get too far out of range. So it comes with two of these probes. I'm just setting one in the first hole and just going to set that there as kind of a control the temperature gauge inside here I'm going to put one and basically since I'm going to be using like you know a whole bunch of probes I'm not going to be able to use the little hole for temperature probe that comes with my grill I'll have to just use that for the built-in one the other others I'll just have to basically put the lid up and just you know put them in through the lid or something but just going to put that one there on that pizza stone that's still kind of hot and that'll give me another uh, way of reading the temp. Okay, so now I'm going to connect the uh, iGrill 2 unit to the phone app. So I'll just turn it on and I'm in the iGrill app. <clears throat> I click on find devices and while it's getting ready to bring up, it has to bring up the iGrill 2. There's the iGrill 2 on my screen now. And if you see here over on the iGrill it shows 95 for one probe and I click over on the other it shows 156 so it's showing the different temperatures for the different probes. There's a red light for each probe so I can go back to probe 1 and then probe 2, probe 1 you can see the difference. But now I'm going to pair with the iGrill unit from my app and it's connecting Now I'm paired, and so I can click continue, and it says start grilling. I can say start grilling. So I can do food temperature or grill temperature. If I had an ambient probe, I could do the grill temperature here, but I'm going to do food. So let's just act like I'm cooking a, uh, a brisket, and so I want 195 as my doneness. So I say set doneness, set it to probe 1, start grilling on probe 1. And so I've got uh, a dial here that shows temperature that will continue to go up and notify me when it's done. I could stop grilling if I wanted to stop early and change it to like a different meat or something. I can go into edit and you know it says beef brisket has only one doneness level. You cannot edit the doneness. <laughs> but if it was something else I could edit the doneness like if it was a steak. So if I go over here in the temperature I can see both my probes. So I'm just going to go into probe 2 let's say start grilling food temperature and let's say I'm doing a red meat and I'm doing a a fillet steak and let's say just for the sake of this that I would make it rare at uh, 120 it looks like I had some connection issue with something but we're not going to worry about that we're not going to do smart lock for my eye grill either so I say start grilling and so it starts beeping it says hey your uh, your steak's overcooked. It starts beeping, gives me the warning. I can see the cook. Then I can say end grill. So that's what you get if you overcook your meat. So I say clear. I got it. And so this on the unit, it's going to continue to beep. Apparently, let me try and set it to something else. See if it stops that beeping. So let's say that's a brisket too. And so it knows it's not done yet. So now it's. You know, I got two briskets cooking. That'd be nice to imagine cooking two briskets today. Be a nice day to cook two briskets. But anyway, you can see here on the dial now. I see my two imaginary briskets. You know, one is at 93 degrees, one's at 153 degrees, and so I can see how done they are. I get a notice when they're done. Go to this graph view for this one. You know, it's showing that the temperature has been steady and level. But if it were changing, it would show the alterations going to go into some other features of the app. You can ignore that connection message. Um, that's just another, something else on my phone that I think it's trying to connect with, but don't worry about that.
You can go in the timers, you can set timers, you can add new timers. Over here on the probes, if I wanted to, I could stop grilling. And I, if I wanted to start grilling and say food temperature, and I didn't want to do a type of meat, but I wanted to manually set a temperature myself, I could click on temperature, and I could just, you know, scroll around. Let's say I wanted to get something all the way up to 212. I could say start grilling, or if I click the plus, it'll let me give a name for that, and I could pull it up later. But I'm just going to do a start grill there. So you can store, you know, your own custom temperatures for your own custom cooking style and what you like. If you go into more, it lets you just add more devices if you have more to add, settings, support, you can leave feedback. Under this gear icon, up in the upper right, you can give a device type, a device name. I'm going to give mine a name. I'm going to call it D Grill. I grill two and so uh, from there you know you can give I've got a custom name now for this so whenever it comes up it'll come up as the D grill I grill two shows my battery level for the unit I'm surprised the fresh set of batteries are already down to 90 percent I hope that doesn't mean it's a battery hog but I I doubt that from my experience with I grill three shows the firmware version the app version that I'm using is the Android app version 4.9.0 just so uh, you're aware of that so if I uh, click on the chart in the upper left in the upper left corner that shows me a chart with a graph for all my probes so I can see you know like the grill is off so the temperature is going down inside the grill so you can see probe 2 the graph is going downward if I click on that you can see the details of it temps going down. Also if I click on that graph and I click the icon in the upper right corner I can share that you know I could share that graph out save that graph if I wanted to. So that's all some pretty cool stuff and so that's basically an overview of the iGrill 4.9.0 app as well as the iGrill 2 unit how you can unbox it, get it set up, how it works, how you can mount it, everything you need to know about the iGrill 2. So I definitely hope that you did like this video. And if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Share the video with your friends, please. Also, I have uh, plenty of recipes and tips at dgrillsmoke.com. That website is dgrillsmoke.com. Also, I'm on Twitter at dgrillsmoke. I'm on Instagram as well at D Grill Smoke. And so also please leave comments. Tell me about what you think about the unit. Tell me what you think about iGrill 2, the other iGrill units, other meat thermometers. If you want to talk about that, that's fine as well, as long as you're not someone trying to uh, do some type of sponsorship for something. <laughs> and this is not sponsored, by the way. This video is not sponsored at all. Um, but also please subscribe to the channel and good eating.